This is just pieces that are available to as elements in his paintings, right? His yeah, this is my paper palette. Your paper palette, okay. Now, let me just so try not to make it too rocky. See if I can't show this awesome collection of pieces, just arbitrary pieces here. Let me see, step around here and come around trying to do a 360 oh yeah i have to get back over there and show you that just everywhere you look there's more and more and more and just so you understand we can come down and it just goes all the way just on and on and on and on and on so we got a frame of reference again Okay, now, I didn't show you, over here, more, and then buckets of paper. Actually, I should call it pulp, with pigment in it. Okay, right at my feet, actually, is where we were just then. That I wanted to come back to, just see the paper, all ready to go. Pigment added. Look at their color. It's incredible. Showing you more and just more. Everywhere you look, there's more. Just more. Constantly. Come over here and look at it. Just goes on and on. All the way to the floor. That's what, four feet high? Yeah. And there's taller ones. It's piece after piece after piece. It's unbelievable take you three years just making papers you can have that palette ready now here you can see how all those pieces start to become elements in a painting now in addition a bad angle but that'll show you how those elements turn out okay you see right there that sun okay now keep your eye on that sun and come back and look right there see the sun okay now let me try to get a better angle so we can look at both of these things here. There's that first painting that I just showed you. Now we're going to see if I can't move over and show you that with the furry hat. Are you going to actually work and show us your work? Now we got a little glob of red down here, is that correct? Yeah. That's actually how it's supposed to be seen, but we're going to look at it like that. What is that? That's part of the sky? Over top of a sun, is that the idea? Yeah, that's part of the sun. I've got the design all laid in on this one except for the last few basic elements before I start pouring. All right, now I see I see considerable change from last week, so obviously you've been working rather hard. Right. Okay, this is a solid week's work we're looking at, the difference between what was last time and well, now, I'm, right? I'm working on seven paintings at the same time. But, uh, and you're working on, you say, seven paintings at the same time? Right. Okay, let's see if we can get this so that it looks. It's a little distorted, but it works. Uh, and then down and under here, unfortunately, maybe I can squat down and show this. We can see a little bit more. And that wasn't there at all last week. Those little strips of uh, cloth, which will outline the forms, will stay in there. And then after the painting is dry, I'll pull them out and there'll be a differentiation in the surface. And basically it's the beginning of uh, the new concept that I'm starting on these paintings. And what is that concept, may I ask? Well, the past concept was everything was where forces meet in part. Now I'm starting to add the concept where forces meet and grow in part. Now, as we watch this composition change, it becomes rather interesting. You see why this amount of work took a week. Each piece has to be selected and put on purpose in a specific spot. 
I just want to get this area right in here because that's where I'm going to be pouring the sky. I still have all this other stuff to do. But now the sky part is pretty well taken care of. And so you don't have to stick all the paper in at once. You can stick it in the stages. Right. This will become rather interesting, I think. We get a better idea for how it's done. You can see these few rows are ready to have been mixed. Really looks tasty, huh? Now as he actually is putting his color on his palette, it's interesting. He's not taking it all from one spot. So he has a good mix for the size of that painting. That's an awful small palette though, Roland. Don't you think that you really ought to have a larger board that you carry that around with? No, this is enough. That's it that grows, much. It grows. Watch him apply this. This little bucket that he's working with, he's actually mixed from a couple of others. And we're just watching very carefully. Apply. Well, I guess for other people, we'd be saying apply paint, huh? I guess we have to say apply color. Building out from the part that was there last week, holding that little piece of paper in, gradually building out and changing the color. So you get that gradual gradation. See if we can get a good feeling for what this is like. Pretty sloppy work, actually. Oh, adding a new color. See now what he's done. How he's built out from the basic sun. Adding new color. You can see some of the elements that he's laid, those little tiny flat pieces of paper, how they're getting wet again and changing color. They will dry back to the original color. But they'll be held in with all this paper. So it's almost like he's adding glue. <laughs> Never thought of it that way before, actually. But that is the glue that holds it all together. Since this is a sun prayer series, the sun becomes all important, so I would assume that's why he's working from the sun out. Okay. Of this buildup of water that I'm seeing, real interesting, that little bit of water, as it's draining out of this, constantly helps to blend so you can get that kind of a look. Not just the paper, it's the water that has pigment in it as it drains, it tends to mix. It's one of the reasons that these elements of the sun have acrylic on them because it tends to discolor those, especially the whites, that water tends to discolor that. With the water mixing in and those yellows, you know they're not going to stay a straight yellow and it's not going to be a straight red. It's going to get a good blend. Here's the painting that we were looking at last week. And as you can see, he's been working. Carefully adding pulp. And again, here we have that same piece of wood running down through the painting, all the way to the bottom. Allowing it to be broken to create that deckle edge.
He has no desire to be interrupted, so I'm going to try to not ask him questions. That's one of the ones I was going to ask. It has to be positioned vertically, not in a slight angle, but just vertically. And he holds it in place with the paper. Gradual changes of color. Trying hard to create something that's visually interesting and relatively exciting. I don't think that's an understatement, but what the heck. Actually, this is the middle of the back side. It's rather visually interesting. Could have just done a painting like this without the elements. Of course, the elements add so much, so very much additional to the painting. It becomes very difficult to visualize them, them being the paintings, without those elements. As we come on down here, you see what I mean right there, folks. That's a good example of what I'm saying. That right composition gets held together with using paper as a glue. And again, this is the back side of the painting. painting. After that, it just becomes fill it in and let it dry. And of course, after it's dried, he works on the front and fixes any imperfections that may have happened since it's so difficult to do this face down. What's the drying time on this, Roland? Well, I won't see this painting now again until probably March. Say what? Probably Take a look up here this, a second. I probably won't see this painting again until March. So okay. This is the end of November. This is November, and it won't be dry until March. What we got? We're going to turn over this painting. It's just been broken. Just lean it up again. You're going to lean that up. We'll just put this one over. Now this one gets flipped over. Wow. Now you had put some pieces of rag down when you had done this. What are you going to do with that? Leave them in or pull that out? Can we do that and see it here on the camera? Or is this too early to pull it out? How hard is that to come out? Oh, wow. It's just changing the complexion of this painting dramatically. You have to glue those back in, is that the idea? Yep. No, I can't tell. Oh yeah, it shows up as a shadow from up here in, in the black and white. I'm sure it'll show up real well on the TV. And this other side, what do we have? can't see it as well because you're covering it, unfortunately.
Have you done this in the past? Yeah. But not too much, right? Now, let's see if I can zoom in on that and catch this, because this is real intriguing to me, and I want to see it up close. Okay, let's come in down here on the first one that I caught. Wow, we can see. Follow it down here. Let's tore it right out. And then he started from here. Now we can follow it here. If I'm correct, yes, I am. You follow it around. I don't know how this will look, but it might work out. It comes around back down there. And it comes. Also, they are around the outside edge. Head back through there and around. Okay.